Okay, so in four parts we also cater for creditors or suppliers for that matter. So if I look at my creditor system um, here, we've got supply details, which is basically where I'll be able to go and create new suppliers and maybe modify or amend the items. Uh, like in all our systems, all our screens, um, we have a search block at the top and I can go and type in as much or little information in there and it will give me a, an idea of what's going on. All right, so I can type in the supplier name, the telephone number, uh, where they physically are. I can maybe put my uh, cell phone number of my representative. Um, I wouldn't know from the video whether this number and this person is still working at this company. So please do not phone them and say that they should be working there because Marcus says so. Um, we have a GRV templates and the templates, um, again, would be handled in a different video. But what it basically boils down to is that you would be able to go and specify what the invoice layout will look like or needs to be used when I, when I receive a stock from this supplier. Um, and then just a little bit of uh, background here, what my huge discount is that I'll be getting, uh, what my COD uh, uh, discount is that I'll be getting from them, and what my current aging is. In other words, what do I owe the, uh, the sub specific supplier? So right now, it's all nice and clean. I don't owe the supplier anything. Um, so I'm sure I'll be able to place an order with them. So that's all the details that we have about a supplier. The supplier is typically updated by either going to process one of these type of transactions down here, electronic payments when we pay them, debit journals when we do a correction on the system, in other words, we're increasing the amount that we owe them, or credit journals, uh, we're decreasing it, that might be for short delivery or credit that they've passed, and so on. At any given time, you can obviously print previous month's statements for them as well, in other words, a month ago or so on. In other words, if I do go in here, let me quickly show you this part of it. Um, again, well, let's look at our South African breweries, and I can go and specify and say I see want to see it for last month. So last month, unfortunately, there's no transactions yet. Another important part of the creditors that uh, we need to set up, especially if you've got uh, supermarkets and liquor stores and so on, is supply deposits. Supply deposits is which deposits are linked to the supplier. In other words, if I go into ABI, uh, which deposits are normally received by them. So they would do typically coding one liter, the crate and the case, the 1.25s, um, and then also the crate for the two liters, for instance. Um, in this case now, I've got actually got a duplication there, the crate and the case. Um, so let me accept both of them for now. 500s as well. Um, and for now, that's good enough. So if I do a process, a, a GRV uh, for ABI, then uh, I'll be able to see which deposits they will accept and I can actually send it back to them. So let's go and do a, a order quickly or a, a GRV. So typically you can go and create the order first and then go and process the GRV after that. Not required, so I can literally just take my supplier invoice once the goods have arrived and I can say I want to process a GRV. I want to create a new GRV for ABI then, uh, create the purchase order, give it an invoice number, 544456 argument sake, and it's for a thousand... 234 rand 55 cents um, and I'll say load GRV now at the moment the only item that is on my database that is linked to ABI comes up here as coca-cola vanilla 2 liter um, if I want to see all the products in other words there might have been items that I have not linked to the supplier yet I can click on all items and it will show me the whole list of products in there so we know that we've got coca-cola can there somewhere all right, so this is my Coca-Cola vanilla, which I had earlier. And I can say that, yes, they come in pack of six, as you can see um, from on the list there. And I'm getting five cases of that. Um, and also, I want to do Coke 300 moles. Um, and you see they come in singles. In other words, I haven't set up my shrinks properly. Uh, and maybe I received 24 of those. Okay, so let's just keep it simple for now. And if I then press tab, you'll see at the bottom right hand side the totals of what the invoice would be. You receive 29 um, products, uh, cases on the system, and you can just simply click next. Now, when you do returns, returns is what I'm sending back to my supplier of the product, not the deposits. Okay, 
just the products uh, let's say uh, products have been uh, gone out of date uh, in other words the sell by date has expired uh, or anything like that and then we get to the deposits now the deposits here you see right at the top of the screen it says deposit returns what did I send back to my supplier so um, I can if you look at your your uh, headings here it's crept empties how many empty crates of one liters that I send them I send them one of those and maybe the two liters the empty crate again um, I sent them two of those just uh, again just an example and at the bottom right hand side excuse me the the total for uh, the returns that you're sending back then uh, again these are your purchases in other words what did you buy from them now with ABI and South African breweries in South Africa they are selling the content and the container separate from each other in other words you're paying for the content the liquid part of it and you're also paying for the container and this here's where we will go and specify that yes we bought crates uh, arguments like we bought uh, two crates uh, came with that uh, or whatever the case may be obviously it will be the same quantity that you had if you can't remember like I can't now let me go back and say my Coca-Cola yes so there were six that I ordered so obviously I'm better into six two liters crate empties over here okay uh, it actually shows you the quantities uh, that you've ordered on the screen there as well and um, oh, sorry I entered it in the wrong screen now uh, that was argument sec like two so I'll go next and my purchases there would be six and I will be able to go to my finalizing screen now the finalizing screen right now gives me a total invoice value of 377.83 um, you can see clearly there what your purchases were uh, what your deposits were that you've entered into the system what you said your invoice value would have been one two three four so there's a difference of 839 it means that you made a boo-boo okay so if you made a boo-boo you're welcome to just exit on the screen here like I am going to do now and what that would do is that would basically save the order for you so you can go back and go and double check the items on it and you can do this as many times as you wish until such time that you're happy with the order uh, or the GRV then and you can then click all the way through to the end of it very important as I said if you exit it basically saves it if you want to update your stock you literally would click on process now you'll say where did I'm receiving it into am I receiving it into my default warehouse or warehouse number three this also only comes up if you've got multiple warehouses selected all right so I'm gonna uh, select my default warehouse do you wish to commit yes thank you <clears throat> and then nice and clean again my purchases my deposits that I purchased any returns that I had and then the total of the invoices at the bottom um, in my opinion very very nice layout of the invoice very easy to balance back to what your purchases were from your supplier okay so let's go and see uh, the prompts me out you say you want to you place an order for him at some stage you want to record it as an outstanding balance or sorry outstanding order I'm going to say no for now and now if we go back to our creditors and we go and look at ABI and we click on the statement over there we've got our invoice of 377 coming through and that's the amount that I would owe them okay and again depending on my agreement with them that will determine when I will be doing the uh, the payment um, again we will use uh, like most businesses we'll use our creditors uh, credit uh, as much as we can to make sure that our cash flow doesn't suffer because of it um, so if your business is strong enough you'll do a payment immediately uh, or depending on the terms that you have with your supplier that in a nutshell is creditors there might be other questions if there are please uh, welcome to email us at support at, uh, sorry support at fourpos.co.za and we would gladly assist and maybe do an additional video enjoy